got um, some glass there with a trace through. Now, it's certainly Rosemary Robert for Wish, but I'm not sure whether that was uh, done by the Warborns with just some glass that was uh, left over there. But certainly the, the west window there, the west, uh, sorry, sapphire west window, um, is hers. And I also like the coloured glass at the top of the square, but I think that looks effective. So we've now looked at Rosemary's glass. I think you can see that we started off with her sort of very Evie Honey Cubist work and it finished at her death with something more akin to the Maria Forsyth glass. Uh, let's now finish by looking at some windows that came after Rosemary in the late sort of 90s, uh, 80s, 90s, and last today. Now, I just mentioned Serena Warborns. Um, she has her studio um, in Suffolk, and here are two windows of hers. Um, the one on the right at Palgrave, um, that looks very Rosemary Rutherfordish, doesn't it? Um, it's certainly not her colours, but the way she's sort of used the glass and minimum paint, I would say you know, she had Rosemary in mind when she designed that window. Uh, Dorothy Marion Grant, uh, this is another lady who was at the glass house we mentioned. Now her masterpiece is probably the Lady Chapel at uh, Cathedral, put in after the war to replace the damaged one. Now, again, more white glass, as you can see, but sadly, uh, we can't really show you the uh, figures there, but the figures are much more conventional, you know, sort of, they look like figures rather than the sort of modernist designs we saw in Evie's and uh, Rosemary's earlier work. But you don't have to go to Exeter to see her windows, you can go to Springfield, and there are two of her windows there. Now, the glass may be not as rich, or the colour glass may be not as rich as earlier glass there, but they're still effective. But what really stands out for me, which makes them interesting, is in the borders. Um, if you look along here, can you see how the borders are not sort of perfect squares, but they're sort of irregular shapes with details put in? And that, together with the colours, I think adds interest to the window. And I've never seen that used elsewhere. So, um, an interesting window and a nice idea with those uh, plain board work. Um, June Armstrong, um, uh, this was um, uh, another stained glass designer, and she again working, I think she's still alive today, I hope she is, uh, uh, she's still working in the sort of arts and craft tradition, but you can see a bit more modernism coming in, and at South Handyfield, Valerie Green. Um, again, showing her skill as an artist in producing those lovely lilies on the uh, uh, right there. Um, full marks to the uh, congregation, PCC, and the uh, clergy at Bridlington for allowing Caroline Swash, who is definitely still alive, uh, um, leading the rest today, for doing, uh, producing this very modernistic abstract window at Bridlington Church. Um, Again, this one may be by the Love or Hate and is in a medieval building, but it's something we can look at now. And in a hundred or so years' time, there'll be my successor standing up here talking to your great great grandchildren, sort of saying this was the sort of glass we were making in the 80s. So it's good to see this today. Um, oh, sorry, um, just shut up. Uh, Jane Gray. Now, Jane Gray is again one of the um, more well known stained glass. Certainly, in the same glass world. Uh, this is two of her windows, which are both in Essex, or on the little down in Market, so they're not in the Mile Street yet. Um, I believe she suffered a stroke, sadly, and um, uh, sorry, I should have these. Should have these notes out No, no, I've left that down. Yeah, I do believe she suffered a stroke, uh, but uh, she worked from Shropshire and uh, you know, still making windows today. So, again, you can see the, they're not sort of the arts and crafts that we're looking at from the 1920s, but you can see where Jane was sort of coming from 
earlier on in that century. Um, Caroline Benyon, uh, sadly she died um, in 19, uh, 20, uh, 2021, but uh, she was one of the last artists to use the glass house in Fulham. Um, her father, Carl Edwards, who was a very respected uh, stained glass designer, uh, both of them moved into the glass house in 1972, and in 1973, Caroline married her husband, Sir Tony Benyon. Now, although strictly not in um, East Anglia, very near East Anglia. This is one of Caroline's windows at uh, St Albans Cathedral. And again, she's harking way back now to the beginning of the century. In fact, the sort of technique of using lots and lots of small bits of glass, like a mosaic, is very much what we do in the 13th century. But again, a lovely window with really strong colours, and uh, looking at some of the dreary glass in St Albans Cathedral, this one stands out in the uh, um, in 1992, uh, Caroline and her husband Tony, they moved out of the glass house and the following year the glass house closed and then got used for other purposes. So she was really the last of this long line of um, really good lady female um, stained glass designers who were associated with the glass house. Uh, Gay Hutchins. Um, Gay works from her studio in uh, Lavenham, but she's done a, a few windows. Uh, the one that held them on the right, um, uh, forever, is going to be my uh, bet noir album. Because when I came into the church for the first time and saw it, I was with the church woman. I said, oh, it's Noah's Ark, isn't it? And I was going on to the um, ark. Because when I saw that bit there, I thought it was a giraffe. <laughs> the, um, the church warden was not pleased. You know, I was uh, virtually rejected from the church, and I looked in. Of course, it's uh, the empty tomb with um, the angel there and the uh, guy who's singing. So, yes, um, put your brain in gear before you open your mouth. <laughs> um, a more recent window of hers is at the Colchester Headgate Theatre. Now, this is really just paint on glass. Um, you know, the enamels we should talk about. Um, Basically, just very good what the animals are. If you take a um, coloured hot metal jar and run it down to a fibre, you can then add some flux to it, so to lower the temperature as it melts. You can then add some um, binder, which is sort of done Arabic, to sort of stick onto the glass, and then some vinegar or some liquid just to make it solution. And then you can paint this powdered glass mixture onto the glass. But because it's got a binder in, when you put it in the kiln, it will melt at a lower temperature than the actual glass it's painted on and hopefully adhere to the surface. And this is really what's happened here. She's used um, yellow stain at the top there, um, used some black paint for the uh, notes, but the uh, figures in the middle are uh, done with enamel paints. So that is really harking back to the um, 17th and 18th century when that was the main way of making stained glass windows. So um, Susan McCarthy. Uh, Susan McCarthy, um, well, she should be a marketing girl for some reason in the school. Uh, she's got a studio up near Second Ward in Ashton. Um, she worked first for um, a very respected firm called Burwell and Books, then set up her own studio. And today she's sort of making windows in her own style and doing a lot of restoration work as well. So, two early windows there. Um, Designs uh, fit the, um, the shape of the window well. And here we have one uh, bird book. Now, the reason I put this one in here is because it shows some children playing. Stained glass windows are not only figures of uh, uh, things of devotion, things that beautify a church for remembrance of what I I also believe they're a comment on social history. And what we have here are some children wearing the clothes uh, that would have been worn in the year 2000. But if we go to the next millennium, year 3000, if we're still here, then people will hopefully look at this window and say, ah, oh, that's what um, children were wearing. But it doesn't have to be clothes as well. I've just noticed in this window here, you've got the um, warship at the top of the tray store. And then down at the bottom, you've got tanks and you've got uh, an aeroplane. So 
we've actually got some images from social history from the Second World War. And lots of St. Martin days, they do have these sort of elements of social history which are really interesting to look at and will be you know, a great wonder to future generations. So here we have our children uh, wearing their dresses and whether or not they would wear such dresses now, I suppose it's all jeans and dungarees. So, uh, yeah, very much of interest. And here are some more. Um, the bottom left one is actually uh, a window of mine. Uh, this is some restoration work she did for me. Um, I was given some old critter windows with those heads in. Um, she took them from me, she cut the heads out, she repaired them, and put them in a circular frame, which now fits in the window by my front door. The middle one is interesting because that comes from Great Warley. And Great Wall did have a big collection of uh, glass from the early 1900s. Most of it was sadly destroyed during bomb blasts during World War II. But the cartoons have survived, and Susan used the cartoons to produce these rather beautiful windows in uh, lovely pastel shades, um, which would be on Hampstead Church. And finally, another window there at Tiptree. Right, I'm just about finished. Um, this was a window I showed you right at the start. Um, it's 1909, Western Rizzi, and it's uh, Mary Downs. In the same church, about two or three windows along, we have this window, 2005 by Mr. McFarlane. And what these two windows show is just how far stained glass has developed um, by window designers during the 20th century, from the arts and craft to something quite modern. Now sadly, the West Mersey window, I, I don't know who did it, but this window is right behind that window. You've got the church hall uh, with the roof of it. So you never get the full uh, daylight coming through to illuminate this church in all its glory. But it has got some clever features which may give you a sort of pointer to where stained glass is heading. Um, there at the bottom we have the um, oyster shells uh, we have the paint, the black paint on the yellow glass showing the, uh, the basket weave, but the paint on the uh, oyster shells is actually sort of almost 3D, so it gives you this textured look. As is the water, uh, we've got some very nicely drawn fish, but the blue glass, which is the waves, on the outside or the reverse of the glass, are fused, you know, sort of stuck to um, the glass. Uh, by melting it, little bits of white glass which are going to fuse onto the back of the blue glass. So when the light does get through it, it acts as a prism and sort of refracts the light and gives it a shimmering effect. So the water does look as though it's shimmering with froth and what have you when the sun hits at the right time. So glass doesn't have to be a two dimensional medium. You can now sort of add texture to it and make it almost 3D. And the last side, Rosemary Rutherford's uh, memorial window. Uh, this was made um, a couple of years after her death. It's at um, uh, Washington the Willows. Um, it was uh, executed by her brother, who was another vicar, also called John, because I believe uh, he was um, <coughs> to get a given no name, so he wasn't confused with his father. And somebody called Rowley Haddon. Uh, been searching for who Rowley Haddon is, but I imagine he was a, a local cross in the area. Now, and uh, I've made reference to Anna Haywood's, Anna Haywood's book. Um, this was a book produced some time ago, which is a catalogue of all her windows. Um, it used to be available as a sort of CD ROM, but luckily, most of the churches which have her windows do have a copy of it, certainly the ones I've seen there. And what Anna did is sort of divided up. Mary's, uh, sorry, Rosemary's windows into um, sort of groups based on style. You have the early glass, which is the very strong, rich coloured glass, very little white, which had um, very bold figures, so forth, such as our east window here. You then have the uh, later glass, which um, is all by the, um, this kind of window there. Uh, 
which is much lighter glass, very thin ones. The third type of glass was the bow of the uh, Bearden Mount glass, which you saw at Clapton. And the fourth group she had was the pictorial flowery natural glass, which is what we have here. There lots of flowers, birds, that was in view, with a central figure. So you've now seen all Mary's glass of glass. And if you didn't know, she's a rosemary, it's just um, above the church there. Um, if you go out through the um, through the church hall there and go down, you'll see a whole set of rose like that, and there is Mary's rose there. Thank you for coming this afternoon and supporting the continued restoration of St. Mary's. Um, a couple of websites there you might be interested in. Um, first up at the bottom there is this book I'm talking about and Mary is. The top one is the um, CD of Mary one, the one um, uh, that was mentioned at the start of this talk. Um, yes, can you use your mic, please? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right, I'll start again. Uh, thank you for coming and supporting St Mary's. Um, the bottom uh, reference there, that's the book by Anne Haywood, which is, um, uh, I don't know if it's available or not, is it Ross? Is it still available? It is still available, but we hope to update it with some better photographs and to make it available uh, through the church website in connection with our exhibition here. Okay, yes, so look out for that. Uh, the top one is the CVMA, that's the bunch I work for. Um, you might, it was mentioned that I did a photographic survey of all the medieval glass in Essex, but as an experiment, I included all the glass uh, that was in the church, you know, from, uh, from medieval right up to you know, the glass was made yesterday. And there's pictures of that on the, the website. And the third, second one is uh, by a gentleman called Robert Everard, and he's done all the home counties, and uh, well, I think it's gone up to Staffordshire. Now, you can click on that and you get a whole list of the places, say in Essex, and you click on one place and you get the churches, and then it lists the Victorian glass in there. Now, a word of warning Essex has uh, got quite a few roads in, including one of um, Rosemary's windows, which is um, completely wrong. But it's a good place to start if you are visiting churches and you just want to see what's in there, um, especially sort of uh, the home counties. You can sort of click on a place, see what's there. Is it, ooh, is it worth looking at? Yes, probably is. So, there we are. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chris. It's been a fascinating to Any questions? Well, I'm conscious that the church has got quite chilly, hasn't it? We wanted to get through and have a cup of tea. I do commend have a good look around our beautiful church while you're here. There's half of you wouldn't mind going through and um, the other half having a look around and there won't be such a long queue. The next talk that we will be undertaking here will be on the 25th of March when Rosemary's great niece, Naomi Courtney Luck, will be coming to talk about her great aunt's work, life, and we will be having the formal opening of the exhibition which we are developing in that far corner. So it would be lovely to see you then. Thank you very much, Chris. I'm going to ask Alan, our PCC treasurer, to give a vote of thanks. Chris has done a number of talks on all for charity, and we are really grateful for that fascinating tour. Uh, just before Alan goes, I, I did have all the notes here, and uh, obviously, if you didn't teach, I just forgot about them. Talks. So I do apologise for the pauses when I had to just refer to some of the names. And one last thing, just around the corner, I've got that cartoon from um, the Kidderminster Church. Uh, I've also, got also a picture of the window, what it looked like. Also, there is a is another framed picture which is of a vividness produced by Harvey Bell of Birmingham. And look at it, it's a work of art in itself. Uh, you wouldn't believe that it's a uh, watercolour um, and it's initial design. Chris, on behalf of the PCC and, and everybody here, thank you so much for coming to the talk today. It's been absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's 
so fascinating, so informative, so educational, so interesting. It's a really well worth having this out of them. Um, looking around the church, we really are very blessed. As the, the stage as we've got, we are very blessed that John Rutherford happened to be the vicar here, that his daughter happened to become a stained glass expert. Um, but sometimes I feel we don't appreciate them as much as we should. I think your talk will make us appreciate them a awful lot more. Thank you very much. Um, it's a small token. In the treasure, but it is a bill in there. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Yes, so when well, I get home and I've got the car away, I'll come with this. And, uh, so I was a teacher uh, for many years, and I say I taught it to Rainsford, and I also taught Basildon and Warford's finest as well. I've got no trouble in standing up in front of a thousand uh, 12 to uh, 11 to 16 year olds in uh, Warford's and giving them what for them. Uh, hold their attention, but probably in front of 40 adults. Yeah. Oh, obviously, I'm terrified. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause for our speakers.